Hi, fifth graders. My name is Miss Malpica, and I'm going to be teaching all of the reading lessons for this spring quarantine learning time. And this unit that we're doing is the fantasy unit, which is my favorite unit. And so I'm really excited that I get to be the teacher. So just a thought before we start this lesson and any of the lessons that you watch on video, remember that it's video. So you can pause it and rewind it and watch again as many times as you want. So, you know, like when you're in class and you raise your hand and you say, what did she say? You can just go back and watch it again. And if you ever have any questions, you can contact any of your teachers and we are all here to help you. Before we get started with the first lesson, I want to make sure you have the materials you need. So you should have a packet with um, a piece of paper on the front that looks like this that says reading what do I do and you're right here right now and watching video lesson one and you can follow along with this paper and with the lesson that I'm going to do for video lesson one um, and I'm also going to be using this PowerPoint to go ahead and teach the lesson so fantasy reading lesson one what type of world is this so the first question you might be wondering Oh, is what is fantasy and why are we reading? So first of all, you should know that fantasy stories are awesome. They're incredible stories set in wild, unimaginable places, and they oftentimes teach big life lessons, so they have awesome, clear themes in them. And reading fantasy can be a little confusing sometimes, and the storylines can be a little complicated. And that's what makes you a stronger reader. How do you start a fantasy book? Well, fantasy books are often set in places that are a little different from your own. So you have to ask yourself, what type of world is this? At the beginning of a book, just like at the beginning of a story, you think about, okay, what happens first? Characters and setting, right? So what kind of setting is this? It could be a futuristic world where everything seems normal, but things are a little bit different than normal, like City of Ember. Or it could be a medieval world, like with swords and knights and princes and princesses. Or it could be a magical world, like Harry Potter. So the first learning target is, I collect clues about the setting. When, where, and what type of world is this? So I'm going to start by looking at the cover of my book, and I'm going to notice the details about when, where, and what type of world is this based on what I can get. So on the cover, I noticed that Rowan is wearing some kind of old fashioned looking clothes and he has like scrolls for paper. And in the little print under the title, it says, can Rowan save his village? Those clues make me think that this story was set a long time ago in a, a little village somewhere. Then I'm going to take a look at the back of the book. That's called the blurb. It says, with this, oh, seven hearts the journey make, seven ways the hearts will break. With this warning from a wise woman, Rowan and his six companions set out to climb the forbidden mountain that towers over their village, Rin. They must save the river upon which Rin depends, and they believe the source of the problem lies at the top of the mountain where, legend has it, a dragon makes his home. Well, if there's a mountain, a dragon at the top of a mountain, this is definitely a magical world. Ooh, no one who has ever climbed the mountain has returned alive. Will Rowan conquer his timidity and fear and prove to his village that he can become the man his father once was, only if he can survive? Now this book's kind of unusual because it has a map on the inside of the cover. And not all books have that. If you notice right here, it has map of Rin right here and it's by a mountain and there's a stream and the stream goes by this other town, Maris, and there's these other towns over here. And out in the river, there's a serpent. Here's a blow up of the town. It's such a small little town, but this is definitely a magical world if it has a serpent in the water. When you start your book, I definitely recommend looking at the table of contents. What can we learn about when, where, and especially what type of world this is from the titles of the chapters? Not all books have title chapters, chapter titles. 
So as I skim through these titles, I notice chapter four is called Seeing is Believing. That makes me wonder, what in this world is hard to believe? One more thing you might want to check for in your book. Now my book, on the very first page, it has this sneak peek. It's like just a little bit of the story. It says, Rowan had never disappointed the bookshop. Bookshop? He had never let them down. In the frosty early mornings or in the heat of the sun, when they were injured or giving birth to their calves, when they needed comfort as the dragon roared, he had been there. Now they needed water. They would not expect him to fail them. To them, he was not an undersized, scared weakling. To them, he was a leader, guide, and friend. They trusted him absolutely. The thought flowed through him like warm, rich milk. He raised his head and looked straight at Strong John. I will go, he said. The map he held fluttered in the little breeze that always came before the dawn. I will go with you to the mountain. This page gave me some interesting details about this world. Bookshaw? What is that? Some kind of different animal? And there was a dragon that roared? This is definitely a magical world. So I previewed the book, the front, the back, the table of contents, and the map, and now I think we're ready to start reading chapter one, thinking about the setting. When, where, and what type of world is this? So this is the end of the first lesson. In the next video, you can follow along with your packet as I read chapter one. And then there's another little short video after chapter one about the setting of chapter one. And then um, in the next video, we'll do lesson number two, which is 